Um, so we are back uh, live and uh, very, very excited to have the return of a very special guest uh, and uh, working with the uh, online manipulatives online and uh, Math Chat Live is a live interactive experience within us, within the panel here and with you as well out there on Twitter. Uh, also on Facebook and YouTube and LinkedIn. Uh, recording will be there so you can watch it later and also comment on the recording and ask us questions. So not just on the live one. So so do engage with this. The whole idea of this thing being live is in some ways like live teaching. It's it's responsive. It uh, uh, You ping back to us and we'll ping back to you and uh, answer your questions as well as I can, as we can. So um, yeah, we'll go on to a very quick round of introductions and then we'll, uh, we'll get cracking. So. I'm Atul, uh, Atul Rana. I'm an online tutor. I like my tech and teaching maths, so teaching everything from uh, number bonds to A-level maths. Uh, so yeah, over to you, Priya. Hi, I'm Priya. Maths is definitely my specialism with experience of teaching from key stage one all the way to key stage four. At the moment, I am trying my hand at just like uh, ASO online tutor as well as trainer. And Paula, it's your first time here. Yes, it is. Thank you for having me. Um, my name's Paula and I'm a teacher at a local primary school and I'm also a lecturer in primary mathematics at our university in Hull. Brilliant. And finally, our guest, Amy. Hi, everyone. Yeah, so my name's Amy Howe. Um, the accent probably gives it away that I'm not local, but I am from Canada, uh, which is where I trained and became a teacher and taught for many years. Um, for those of you that do know me and follow me on Twitter, you know I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission to get the wreck and wreck in the hands of children and to uh, just talk about how versatile and visual it is. So yes, I'm absolutely thrilled to be here again, a tool, which is probably a good sign when you ask me to come back. And uh, thanks for everyone for joining. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, it was such a good first one. I'll link the episode, that was the very first one we did, which uh, was using, uh, it was kind of like a whistle stop tour of the, of the Wreck and Wreck. Uh, and, and this time around when we had a conversation, thought we'll choose a specific aspect of how to use and there's so many things you can do with it right and so um and um you asked me and i came up with a list and it seemed to be like subitizing always comes to me as that that foundational bit through which all other bits take place because i do a lot of intervention work with uh, uh for example i've gone year 11 uh, where i'm working with number bonds and i come back to the idea actually you need to learn subitizing you have to develop your subitizing uh, and that's that's where the that's where it really needs to be done first uh, this idea of abstraction but anyway so it's a very very important skill set uh, and it's kind of the fundamental maths but that's that's just my viewpoint so I'll, I'll hand over to you Amy I think you've got you've got a few exciting things for us well, I've got some things to try and I, it's so lovely to have Paula and Priya because I know how passionate Paula is about the Wreck and Wreck. She's been a huge, a huge supporter of it in her school. And so I thought, oh, who better than, um, you know, <laughs> you want to fill the panel with people that are positive about it. So, um, yeah, and Priya and I have had lovely discussions. So it's, it's I think it's going to be interesting. Lots of just little things to do. I think I'll share my screen so we can get started. Yeah. Okay, so can you see that? Looks great. You've got uh, Amy House subitizing on the left hand side and a lovely tour or wreck and wreck on the right hand side here. Yeah. Okay, and actually what I'm seeing is I've got Paula's in there, which I do not want to have. So if you could just bear with me, I have to go on to my app. We were trying and testing a little something and uh, yeah, now you can see that. Okay, so here I am, subitizing with an exclamation mark. My father wouldn't be impressed. He says, you save those for really exciting things. But for me, um, I happen to think that subitizing is really exciting. So um, if you are joining um, and watching live, there is a, a wonderful app that perhaps uh, Atul could put in the on Twitter that people can follow along um, afterwards or whatever, but it, it will look like this one and it's by the Math Learning Center. 
So off we go. We're going to use the virtual app today. Priya and Paula and Atul, I know Paula's familiar with it. Priya, have you used it virtually? Yes, abs absolutely. I have used the Rec and Rec. In fact, I used it with the students at Brunel University for um, explaining how they could use the Rec and Rec to understand visually some mental arithmetic problems. Fantastic. And Paula, you 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 know, and you were just saying earlier, if you don't mind me asking you, what, yeah. <laughs> to repeat what you said about this virtual app. That is absolutely amazing for maintaining student engagement. So when I'm um, doing training with um, our trainee teachers, um, I can use the Math Learning Centre apps, so or there's a variety of apps, to make sure that everybody's engaged, even if we haven't got the physical apparatus, which I think at all has some samples of. <laughs> I think Amy does too. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> so everybody gets to play this way. Absolutely. Okay, so just to refresh, and for those that are watching, there are three buttons that you will need uh, if you're doing these activities. The first one is the, what I call ready position. It's in the bottom left-hand corner of the app. It just sets everything back into ready position. Um, and I just wanna talk quickly about the two rules. And what I love about this app is that when it comes up, it's already default into ready position. So all the beads are on the right hand side, only with our very young learners, which are our subitizers as they begin their, their journey with subitizing, um, they need to know how to manipulate a rec and rec. And so they have to have it in ready position. Adults, we'd say all the beads are on the right hand side. Many three and four year olds wouldn't know left from right. So I've coined the phrase, when your red beads are ready to go. So they're all on the right hand side, but those red beads are in the front and ready to go. And what small child doesn't want to be at the front of the line. And then the second thing is one finger, one push. So when they're counting or when they are um, building numbers on the rec and rec, they're not building one bead at a time and pulling them over. That wouldn't be efficient. <clears throat> that would also not be subitizing. We want them to see it. And then with one pull, they or one push, they will push them over. So instead of going one and then two, they would count over here or see it and then simply pull. So that's what we're looking for as far as the rules with a wreck and wreck. And that's it. I think that's the beauty of just how simple it is. And children don't have to think about, oh, was I allowed to do that? Was I not allowed to do that? It's about explore, exploring. So <clears throat> tonight, I want you to think again through the eyes of a child and, and what they might be thinking. So we know if you watched the last session with one of my dear colleagues and friends, Vicki Priddle, did, uh, she already did a session on subitizing. And I thought, oh, A, I want to watch, but B, I, because she's my dear friend, but also I didn't want to overlap too much or do too many things that were similar. But it was stated then that subitizing is really just a big word for saying I can look at something, know the quantity, and I'm not actually physically counting them one by one. <clears throat> and I love this little, this little girl who looks quite smug and she says, you know, I just knew it. And we need them to get to that point where they just knew it. So how do we do that? Why use a rec and rec? So I'm gonna put that out to the panel, having a look at the rec and rec, perhaps having used the rec and rec. Why would I think, other than the fact that I'm on a mission, um, why would I think, to use a rec and rec and we can start with the 20 bead as pictured i think it's because it's so visual and um and also the fact that the children can build those um, number patterns for themselves and um, those seem to be the key strengths that we're seeing in school at the moment for the children that are just beginning to understand the five of five and the tenness of ten that they can construct understanding for themselves and over time they will be able you'll be able to show them a pattern a number pattern and they'll be able to tell you without counting mm -hmm. wonderful thanks paula yes i i agree with uh paula the visual patterns just become so obvious mm -hmm. with all the repetition that you do with them mm -hmm. and I think that is the power with the wreck and wreck is that visual image because you've already got the number and and that's adding to the 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 visual is adding to it is adding value to that number 
Yeah, I mean, a number is exactly what what we're manipulating here, quite literally and physically. Because when we, as math teachers, talk about numbers, what we really mean, especially in secondary, is numerals, which is uh, you've already gone into that abstraction, uh, that squiggly thing for five that we write. It's a Hindu Arabic numeral, which the Romans wrote differently and the Japanese write differently. That's already an abstraction. That's uh, that's not the number. The number is literally quite physically sitting there on the wreck and wreck as the fiveness of five and um, that's what makes this because uh, students are actually manipulating the numbers and finding the relationships between numbers uh, and treating an, a set of five red beads as a unit of one one mm-hmm. one five of one five um, so that's that's really uh, you know it, it's it's such a effective manipulative that um, I think the government's put some funding into getting into schools and things like that as well right and you are you've been using it all along before it became all of that as well so yeah yeah, yeah. Thought, but I think oh sorry no I was just I was uh, in agreement total, in total agreement there and I think uh, even just looking at the two Im- images on the screen you can see that it's a structured image compared to, you know, children trying to build um, the family of five using counters, for instance, which can get quite messy. Here we've got a structured image, so there's a lot of order attached to this manipulative as well, which I think is very appealing to um, children. I think that's very appealing to teachers as well. Yes, yes. (laughs) If you know what I'm saying. (laughs) Yes, sometimes they prefer to get out something that's sort of all-inclusive and nothing Mm -hmm. has to be moved around. Um, other than it stays on the wreck and wreck. So, yeah, and I did put the fiveness of five and the tenness of 10, because I think too, that what, you know, it sort of speaks for itself, but when they can see five red beads, and even if they're talking about the colors, I'm okay with that. You know, that's their language. um, And I want them to, if that's how they explain that they know it's five, it's all the red beads, I'm totally okay with that. But what they are able to do very quickly and I know Paula having have the, having them in her classrooms and in her school will probably tell you it doesn't take long before a child, if I say show me five, they've, you know, it doesn't take long before they have to not count one, two, three, four, five and push. You know, they just know it. And that fundamentally is subitizing. So not only can they see five, they can see 10. Um, yeah, which brings us into place value, which we're not covering today, but I happen to think that it's just one of those magnificent tools for a buzzword of subitizing that's going on. Mm-hmm. So what else can you use or what else have you folks used in in your tutoring a tool or Priya in your in your past or perhaps Paula at your school? What are mm-hmm. you pre reckon or you know, what have you used in the past? as subitizing tools or manipulatives? Uh, Dice patterns, Mm -hmm. uh, flashcards with dots on, irregular, um, random, well, random arrays and regular arrays, uh, Numicon. Okay. Well, that seems to have covered it. Oh, sorry. (laughs) A a little little bit of uh, Cuisinaire rods, but with the Cuisinaire rods, it's the uh, again, learning of the familiarity of the size if it's taught with one unit, worth one unit each, um, and it increasing in that gradient. Um, yes, those are the ones and the dice as the, mm-hmm. the counters, double sided counters, mm-hmm. yeah. 10 frames, 10 frames mm-hmm. you can use for subitizing. Yeah. yeah. At all, anything that they haven't missed that you may use as a yeah, I'm um, just looking at comments as well. Uh, Vicky's tuned in. Thank you very much. And Vicky's got her own ones as well. Uh, she's saying Lovely. she likes the mess-free aspect of the rack and rack, especially when it comes <laughs> to using the hundred when we go to hundred. Uh, she says dice, dominoes, dot cards, fingers. Um, yeah, I would say I w- also use my the starting one is I use the one dice so i just yes. want to get them to be familiar with up to six or five and uh, so i start off with the dice because everyone has a dice at home and if they don't i actually post mail mail them to all over the world if need be um and then counters also 
uh, obviously the ones on hand, which is the yes, entire reason for the base 10 yes. system. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, also, what I find useful is using more than one representation because you want to get the fiveness of five through obviously that with the counters, the rec and rec, uh, which c can slow down things initially. But uh, yeah, so once you start with the dice, go on to all the other ones. Um, to be honest, there's an infinite number of ways in which you could do it, right? You could find as many representations as you want. Uh, absolutely. So no, ones. absolutely. And I, I, I love how it, it, I did not send a tool my slides prior to this, but it's going to be a really lovely segue into what we're doing because we are going to talk about here are some of the things and most of them have been mentioned and I put dice first because it's sort of it's the first thing that comes to mind when you think about oh knowing a quantity without counting dice but you can also thank you at tool and i think vicky mentioned it as well uh, fingers and we and we have to think about that because those are just so accessible to children but if you notice at the bottom of my slide, I also put what is the same and what's different. So as we go through them, I kind of want you to think about what do these things have in common or not in common? Because we do want to talk about how important it is to have uh, a variety of manipulatives and to link things that are a bit different. So we've also got dominoes, which have the same configuration on here. I am giving you the answers, but um, but yet are a little bit different uh, dot plates. Nobody said tally marks, I don't think, but they would also be a lovely method yes. to, to be able to subitize. Five frames and 10 frames. And I made sure I put five and 10 um, because for me, I think that is actually the starting point for our youngest learners. And playing cards can also mm -hmm. be something um, that, that people use. And so, but if you think about, and I do want you to think about what's the same about and if I were to say the hands, the 10 frame, and the tallying, sort of, do you see what they would have all in common? Mala's nodding. Yeah. It, yeah. Priya, do you want to say anything? Sorry, yeah, yes. I, can't do that. I, I always tell the children that you've got magic in your fingers, and this is where it completely marries with the wreck and wreck, the, the red and the white, with the five and the five. Mm -hmm. And likewise with the tally and the bundle. Mm -hmm. Five and a bit more, five wise pattern. Yes. But beautifully with all of those, we you know with those images that you just said, Amy. Yes. But I think what's what's going to be interesting is we're going to sort of incorporate, of course, I, you don't see the wreck and wreck on there, but that's coming, obviously. It's going to be the focus. But how do we, you know, why not add one more thing to it and, and start to talk about how the same and different it is when we're subitizing with a wreck and wreck. So I also want to touch on something that Paula, you mentioned right at the beginning, and I'm going to show you standard. So this will be a standard format, filling in a 10 frame, left to right, top row, then bottom row, versus non-standard. And I'd like to know your thoughts on those two they both are seven but which one would you think children would find easier would you even use the bottom one or only the top one would you only use the bottom one because you want just just kind of curious about standard versus non-standard i just feel that the standard you know creates order out of chaos and that's what we really want our children to do to create some order and to begin to reason and think systematically. And so for the first image, that's what it does for me. The other one is a little bit too chaotic and I could lose, I could miscount. If I was four or five and I started to count those counters, I, it'd be difficult to check if I was, you know, I got the right answer compared to this, you know, the first image. Yeah, I've got I an interesting game uh, that uh, I mean, we would use games where my people will throw the dice and then recreate the dice pattern manually on the table with the counters. And then if necessary, they'll actually touch it and feel it. Sometimes I ask them to close their eyes and actually feel the pattern and then spread it out on the 10 frame. And if it's something like six, they may sometimes just recreate the six pattern on the 10 frame. 
which is, I suppose, non-standard according to that definition rather than because we're looking at filling all the fives up, which then um, then that shows, I then ask them, can you do it with filling all the fives up? I call it the top floor, fill all the top floor up and then whatever's left. Um, but to start off with, yeah, I think because it ties in with the with fingers. Uh, the, another really interesting thing, I'm a bit of a multi-bass obsessive. Um, and the only reason we use, uh, I suppose, the 10 frame is is to recreate this 10 frame, essentially. Uh, mm-hmm. And I sometimes mention The Simpsons. So I said The Simpsons, if you look at The Simpsons, the only <laughs> character in The Simpsons that's got 10 digits is God. Uh, look, look it up. <laughs> and it's, Fun fact, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, and it's because animators, the early animators, it's just easier to draw four four digits in each hand. So, so, so the Simpsons would be using an octal base system. They would be using an, an eight frame, and that's uh, so quite an interesting little <laughs> thing. I mentioned that to TTs. But and in, in some ways, an eight frame is easier. It's just fewer, and it's easier to divide a grouping system based on eight, because you can divide it and divide it again. Um, mm. Interesting. But, uh, yeah, ten frames. Yeah, I'm not ready for a base eight system. Not not yet. Nor nor probably are our little ones when they're when they're learning to subitize. But but yeah, I kind of wanted to put that slide on there to so to show. I think it is really important that we show children um, how to do it as Paula mentioned systematically. You know, they're both seven. Yes, but what's the purpose of subitizing? To know a quantity without counting. And I, you know, I will be a hundred percent honest. I look at the bottom one and I have to conceptually you know pull it apart partition it and go well there's three four five seven okay you, you know it, it doesn't come to me naturally so i'm not saying we never use non-standard because we absolutely do but just thinking about initially when we're teaching um subitizing i think we do need to keep to that standard formation and then you know as they progress but let's keep going because <clears throat> we're also going to talk about non-standard with dot plates vicky has also got um, an answer i'll just put vicky's answer in about that uh I think standard is definitely easier, but non-standard leads to more work with conceptual subitizing, mm. seeing things in groups, i.e. three and four, but yes, the standard yeah. also does because you can easily see five and two. So Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And we're going to talk about conceptual as Vicky touched on uh, before as well. So I'm just going to bring up, um, so I was trained in Canada and we we uh, used a lot of John Van Waal's work. And so he talked about subitizing and perceptual subitizing, teaching it with dot plates, which of course are very cheap. You can get them. Um, I, I quickly learned that we have Dollarama in Canada and you have Poundland here. So you can go down to Poundland. <laughs> Uh, but if you're listening in Canada, you can go down to the dollar store or Dollarama and you just get your paper plates, you get some some stickers and off you go. As you can see in the formation here, that first column, those are very much the standard dice formation. But John Van Waal also took it a little bit further and said, you know, sometimes we need to expand that into that non-standard, but also it's not too chaotic, Paula. It's still a bit, you know, it's still a bit mm-hmm. structured, but we need to be able to have them think a little bit a little bit more deeper than just the dice formation. So I'd like you to get your Reckon Rec um, app or your actual one ready. And we're just going to do a couple of these. And again, the dot plate is just so simple to practice with children. And I do want people to see how easy it is to use these. So I've got some ready. I've got some with the regular format. There it is. Off you go. Build it. How many did I build, everybody? Or how many did I show you? <laughs> how many? Five, <laughs> yes. And what does that look like on the Wreck and Wreck when you built it on there? Five red beads. Five red beads. Red, red beads on the top. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Ready position. We'll just do another one. How many dots are on the plate? You would build it. I'd say, how do you know? What does it look like? And luckily, these are two red beads or two red dots, and so are yours, two red beads. Now let's go on to ready position. And then I would just start adding some of these in. So how many dots do I have? Can you build it? How many did I build? Atul, you built yours probably physically on there. What did what did this quantity look like? What is this quantity and what did it look like on a wreck and wreck? Uh, I just recreated it. It's probably mirrored, isn't it? Yeah, so I, I just recreated okay. it. That's okay. Uh, yeah, just uh, just as is. And what does what what quantity was it that I showed you? Oh, four, four. And what does it look like on your wreck and wreck? Uh, just uh, four in a row, just like you had it there. 
okay? And some students might even say one less than five. So they're supertizing, but they're also sort of solidifying that quantity. What is four? Well, it's one less than five. Okay, and then the last part that John van der Waal talked about, oh, and we're gonna go on to that, sorry, in a minute. See, what happens is I get all these slides and I change them around at the last minute. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to do some practice online. So I I found this wonderful site that's free. It's called Dreambox. I believe I have muted the, the uh, computer that speaks to us. So I'm going to click on the link. It's going to start instantly. So you need to be in ready position because I want you to build what you see. The computer will tell you, you know, it's going to determine how long you're going to get to see it. You can't blame me, but you need to pay attention. See, I sound like a teacher. <laughs> All right, so are you ready? It should come up on here. And it's gone. Can you build that? How many did you see? Yes, Paula's showing us <laughs> her hands and saying five. Absolutely. Whoops. And the other thing that we're going to do now, I could show the, the beauty of this is that before children are able to do it in that sort of two second recall or that two second understanding, um, you can actually hold this open as long as you'd like. And then you can hide the card. What's also really nice with the interactive whiteboards is when children build it on their rec and rec, and I can see that they got it correct. They then can come up. Um, sorry, I'm going to hide that. So it was five. They can come up and click on five. And if it's correct, it stays. If it's incorrect, it sort of flashes again. So they can subitize numbers up to 10 very simply. So let's just try one more ready position. Here it goes. How many did you see? Priya's holding up fingers, a tool saying it's seven. Let's click and see, perfect. And again, so we just kind of keep clicking, but the practice is lovely because it, it relates what they're seeing and then they're building it. What I would eventually do is I wouldn't let them build it on the wreck and wreck. I'd want them to actually just see it, know it, say it, and then come up and do it. So we sort of wean them off that building process but we're also, we also want them to be confident in their subitizing. So give them lots of opportunities to build it. All right, so that's a wonderful website, which we will return to for a few other uh, tasks. Um, yeah, and I, I really loved this quote because why bother? You know, why bother doing this subitizing other than they can play games with dice and whatever, but have a look at this. Any comments on that? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a really sophisticated thing, subitizing. Um, like if you throw a, I think I saw this on another one where you have a five and a six, the pattern, dice pattern five and six, or even in the, on, on the wreck and wreck. Um, so five and one, so five reds and one. I'll actually do that there here. So, and you know what? I'm going to build what you say on here. So right. So six on the top. Yeah. And what you've got here is the uh, distributive property of um, yeah, the, the distributive axiom uh, where you're really treating it as two multiples of six is really two multiples of five plus two multiples of one. And that links into a lot of secondary stuff where it could be two bracket open x plus one and x is obviously five in this case. Uh, so it's building that that skill set as well. It's, there's loads of things um, when you when you're doing subitizing. Yeah. Following on from that as well, Atul, I've, I was working with um, some children in year three, and we were working on doubles, and either the sixes, sevens, eights, nines are always so tricky and thinking about what you've just said when children know what double five is and double one they're able to use that knowledge to see that double six is 12 because they can partition and put it back together again and and that's a real you know a powerful um moment for the children um so even with the younger learners you can see that it's building those firm foundation for what's happening later in secondary 
I really do think it creates, you know, once children are adept at subitizing, it creates some wonderful space for them to calculate efficiently. So once they can, you know, they know those facts, they can see those patterns, they're able to manipulate them. Yeah. And, and that's one of the things that I um, really do feel strongly about with subitizing is that it does genuinely support working memory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because one of, the, one of the ways in which to deal with complex number problems is to actually free yeah. your processing memory right in front of you, That's it. isn't it? And subitizing, subitizing, still trying to get the word right. <laughs> <laughs> subitizing yeah. genuinely does allow for that to happen. Yeah, it oh. creates the space. It's the space for the, for the maths to happen, for the magic to happen. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, really good points. Now, when we get to a couple of slides that have just been touched on, we're just going to move forward. But I love a tool's um, your take on that sort of secondary, because this is very, very early number sense, and yet you're able to see how important it is at the younger stages for children to be solid on number sense and sympathizing and all of these. So it's kind of nice that you're able to, to make that link for, for me to hear that. And I just think, oh, yes, we're all doing a wonderful job in it and, and it's working. So that's great. Now, we're going to move on to the second step of these dot plates, which is conceptual subitizing. And that, of course, is where we're sort of looking at two parts and putting them together. So John Vanderwall has also designed these and he's color coded them. And so what's lovely about this is that you're starting to see that it's almost done for you. Um, but again, let me just show you a couple of those. So here we have one. How many do I have? Yeah. Build it on the record. Oh. Priya says four. Priya, <laughs> how, no, Priya, how do you see, what do you see when you see this dot plate? How did you know it was four? Because of the way you were holding it, I saw the three and the one. Yes, yes. And the color coding sort of helps you and it, it, it leads you to do that partitioning mentally. But when you build four on the wreck and wreck, do you see three and one? When I built four on the wreck and wreck, yeah, because, because it's I... all on it because it's all on one line, it's right. just one push. Right. So I just see the four. Just see the four and they're all red. So again, this is how I need children to make those links. So even though they see four as three and one on here, they see it as one less than five or just four on a wreck and wreck. But it's really important that they're able to see it both ways and be able to transfer that knowledge of what I see on the plate, I can actually transfer that to my physical wreck and wreck. So it might be something like that and it might look something like this. There's just one more for you to try. What number did you build? And do you see the similarities of this with the wreck and wreck? Five and one, five and one. So again, it's kind of just to, just to kind of have that little bit of discussion about um, the conceptual subitizing and how we can start so early with that. Because, Amy, yes. I, I really like the fact that you were using different colored dots on the plate yes. in comparison to the colors on the wreck and wreck. Because again, mm. it supports embedding that conceptual understanding. I really like that. Well, yeah. I wish I could take credit, but again, I've put John Van Der Waal up there because these these were his configurations. I simply went to Poundland, bought some different colored stickers, and off I went. But I, I think it is. Thank you, Priya. I think it's really important that 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 we talk about that. And children ask, well, why does it look like that there, and why does it look like this on my on my wreck and wreck? But <clears throat> are they able to instantly see that six, but then instantly build six on the wreck and wreck? So just a nice transition. You know, I love the fact that it's so cheap as well and you can build them. And if I was a teacher, which I am obviously, but um, I'd want to make, I want those paper plates. I want those stickers now and I want to build those patterns for real so that I can work with the children as quickly as possible. So this is the beauty of this sort of session that it's lots of practical ideas to implement yes. in practice. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, and actually, Paula, I'm coming to your school and I have extra plates and I have extra stickers. I'll bring oh. them today. <laughs> <Yeah. Can't wait. laughs> 
<laughs> it's a little it thing. <laughs> bonuses, bonuses. <laughs> That's your thank you for coming on this panel. Oh, um, so now you. we're going to take it up a little bit higher. And yet I put teen numbers in the conceptual subitizing because how many are there and how do you know? How many are in that image and how do you know? Why would I sort of consider this to be part of the conceptual? Mm. And I may be wrong. I, I, I just see it as that, but. I also think that teen numbers are one of the ones that children struggle the most with because of the way they sound, yeah? yeah. 14, so they put the four yeah. first and then the one. So yeah. when we use a rec and rec for subitizing and for teaching early number sense, it is literally one ten, four ones. So if we even start to use that language, children are then a little clearer and they can sort of see it in their mind that it's one group of 10, as we talked about the tenness of 10 and three or four or five ones. So we've got 13 there. And again, same thing, how many, how do you know? And it's listening to that conversation with children. So mm -hmm. sort of put those teen numbers in that conceptual. In my opinion, it's almost like because it's that one group of 10 and some more, yeah. It really mo motivates the one as yes. well, doesn't it? You know, the children can see that one is that equal to 110 that's yes. what it represents and um and i love the fact that children can subitize beyond a small number mm -hmm. you know a small set so yeah paula you wait Powerful. oh there's some more to come <laughs> yeah so again it was just having you think about that importance of the tenness of 10 and we can see that in the teen numbers and we know that's where they struggle so if we're, you know, if we're using a tool like the Rec and Rec, that's all going to start to make much more sense to them. So we're going to do another uh, Dreambox activity. Only this time I have put linking manip manipulatives like the Rec and Rec to the 10 frame. So this time I'm going to have the computer show you 10 frames. And again, like the dot plates, you will build what you see on the Rec and Rec. I'll ask you to call out how many how do you know? And guess what, Paula? The numbers are going to be above 10 this time. So here we go. Are you ready? Rec and Rec's in ready position. How many did you see? Again, initially, I get children to build it on the Rec and Rec. Everybody? 14. How much? 14. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. You were able to see it, transfer that understanding and that knowledge. Well done, Atul. He's got it on his record, <laughs> his visual one. Okay, ready position, Atul. We're going to try one more. How many did you see? I would get them to build it. I'd get them to talk about it. And look, he's doing one finger, one push, star student. And how many, Atul? <laughs> <laughs> can, can I, um, I don't know about the rest of you, how you saw it, but I, I spotted the ones that weren't moved. Ah, oh, so okay. I just the image. The yeah, four, yeah, and then I moved it. Okay, so Look, you... actually, I'm going to show the cards so that you can talk us through that. Go ahead. So basically, when I was looking at it, I, I saw the four black spaces. So I was like, okay, how do I replicate that? That means those four blank spaces need to be on the right hand side or on my rec and rec. So I had to move everything else. Wow. I, I wasn't even computing. I was just looking at the pattern. Okay. So you saw 16 as four less than 20, as opposed yes. to there's a 10, there's a five, and there's one more. Isn't that yes. interesting? Thank you for bringing that up because I think that's I think that's really powerful. So now you're subitizing with almost uh, the missing the missing quantities. You were subitizing four, then you were doing mm. mental maths to figure out how much must that be. Interesting. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that tool again, and I'm going to come back to the oops leave, and I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to read ready position and we're going to try a couple more things so 
Um, I'm going to now try to see if I can get the Jamboard working. I was fascinated when Vicky did it with the Jamboard and I thought, okay, this is actually going to work. So could I get you folks to open up the Jamboard? Because what I'd like to show you is, and I took this from the website called Inspired by Play. I've made it a little bit bigger. Can I... Can you see all of that now? Yeah, it's very crisp and clean. Yeah? yeah. Okay. So I just put a few things on there because I would love to have children look at the variety of ways they can subitize using all of these different, um, you know, fingers and, and 10 frames and what have you. And I might get them to do something like, and I've put some instructions on here. So if you want to use the marker or the highlighter tool, if you see a quantity that's three, off you go. And, and maybe a tool you'd like to be three. Paula, maybe you'd like to be five. Priya, maybe you want to be seven. Do, would you like to pick a color or shall I leave it at that? Until <laughs> you're three, Paula, you're five, Priya, you're seven. So you have your colors and I'd like you to just find those quantities in, in that sort of bingo-like image that you see. This is so cool. And I'm hoping that none of you are sort of sitting there going one, two, three, four, five, six, that you're actually subitizing. Well done. <laughs> you're doing very well. I can't believe it. And we will pick the red again. Here we go. How do I rub things out? <laughs> there is a little eraser. Just, there's an eraser um, icon. Oh, yeah, I see. Under. I see. And I think actually I can erase from here. I think I can. I want to take that away. Yeah. See something else. I'll so have you that. noticed that there's something else on there that we haven't actually talked about as an option? We talked about tallies. We talked about 10 frames. We've talked about fingers, dominoes. dominoes. There's something else. Multi-links. We've got multi-links multi there. We've got multi-links in there as well. Color-coded, okay. of course. Yeah to show those yeah this is so satisfying yeah it's very cool <laughs> i mean this is very it's like online learning at it's it's pretty pretty good actually it's pretty cool so if i were to ask um who would be brave enough to say uh what quantities have we missed what are the amounts that are missed if we start at the top and work our way left and then we go to the next row how much is this this is really good and i want you to call it out so how much is this five five how much is this this one six six no. and then we've got here one one and then two, two. ten four three yeah, and so on. So I would want children to be able to make those almost mental switches as they're going um, after they do something like find find this quantity, find that quantity, but then also what's 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 not uh, represented here or how much is this? You could also have them build each of those on the rec and rec with even the rec and rec ones included. But just I just thought it was a nice variation. And uh, as I say, it was by inspired by play. She had already sort of put this all together. I do not reinvent the wheel. I just give thanks to those that have done some fantastic work. Um, but yeah, I, I simply just copied and pasted it into the Jamboard and off I went. So I think that worked really well. Um, color coding and having you all do your own thing. Um, perfect. So now I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Is that okay? Hopefully you're all with me here. I'm going to go back to the number rack and I'm just going to give you my opinion because I that's what I do. Um, so I think you've already prompted me to say this and perhaps you would disagree and please if you do but in my opinion subitizing is the first step in mental mass and i think priya you even you know alluded you might even have said those words mental mass um and then i wrote down a, a few reasons why so i'm curious if you agree why i sort of jotted down like why why is subitizing the first step in mental mass what what are the skills or what are the what are the things that you do in subitizing that you need to do in mental mass 
I'm putting you on the spot. It's fine. The, the first thing that comes to my mind is that it is the foundation because you are using it to recognize. You're using it to manipulate. Mm -hmm. You know, you're using it to build on. Yes. Yes. We're doing a lot of work in our school at the moment about schema and developing flexible mental models. And the way we can do that with young learners is for allowing them to construct um, those numbers for themselves mm -hmm. um, and seek out those relationships. And the more practice they have, the more they, they sometimes withdraw from the concrete because they're working in the abstract. So for me, subitizing helps children develop flexible mental models that they can keep returning to and use in their working memory, Priya, <laughs> when they're calculating. Well and truly, it, yeah, you, I, you know, it is, yeah. I'll stand by it. <laughs> yes, it's a visualisation, isn't it? It is, it is, mm. it is. Yeah, I suppose uh, for, for me, an, another way of looking at it is what happens if people aren't able to subitize um, uh, mm. conceptually? I get that with um, quite a few of my pupils and when I first introduced them to the Reconnect I have actually seen them move either do them one by one in which case the one finger one push thing has gone out or tap them uh, and yeah. I've also seen them uh, count I've actually get the dice and like count them out on, in clusters of one as Bernie Westacott says and this cluster of one uh, thing Ronit Bird calls it the counting trap, and because it's comfortable, counting is a uh, count. Learning counting is sophisticated as well, but once they've learned counting, it becomes this kind of self-fulfilling cycle where they just do every calculation in clusters of one, and that's uh, that's what you want to get them out of, and you want to get them into thinking of these numbers as a as a unit, as cluster, um, as a set, as as a set of five, being the one thing, a uh, unitization set of 10 is one thing and uh, that's um, yeah subitizing is is I, I tell a lot of parents of my duties this is the one activity that is going to lead to the highest long term uh, it is the beginning of all of maths I even tell them pretty much it is yeah. so that's that's the thing we really need to work on and you know they, they'll have children in year 9 year 10 year 11 and I I have to explain to them actually I, I can't do the GCSE content or uh, as as is expected if they're in year 11 actually we have to get the subitizing first and foremost yeah cool. yeah it, it's yeah well it's lovely that you're all sort of in agreement and and now that you've had that conversation with me I feel like okay now I need to add to my list but some of the things that just popped into my head is that you know when you are doing mental maths uh, you do have to hold numbers in your head you have to hold on to them because it's not about writing them down it's doing it in your head not physical it's holding on to those numbers but it's also as Atul was just talking about that that conceptual that partitioning that clusters that he mentioned um, they need to be able to do that but they need to be able to do it just in their head um, they also need to perhaps manipulate the numbers into different orders to make it more to make it easier for them and we're going to do a task that was similar to vicky's but we're gonna do a little a little dot pattern task to sort of see how that works um but it improves their efficiency right priya's going to agree with this um but also of course we need accuracy and we need fluency so it's it's it just does so many things and as atul said you know it is the foundation we can't just skip into the abstract we have to make sure that they have a really solid understanding and then I put dot, 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 which is whatever I'm going to add all of your thoughts later. So now we're going to go into conceptual subitizing again with um, some dots as Vicky had done before. Uh, but I also want to incorporate the wreck and wreck into it, which is why I don't want you to think it's a it's a, oh, dear, we're doing this again. What we're going to do is this. I'm going to bring it up on the Jamboard. But what I want you to think about, and I think it might be easier if I just bring it up. I have a couple of questions for you. I'm going to assign um, a tool this one just because you're in the order on my screen. Paula, you can have this one and Priya, you can have the third one. And I want you to think about how many dots there are. I'm going to want to know how many dots there are, but I want you to think about how are you clustering? How are you grouping? How are you counting them? And I'd like you to show me with the pen tool 
And then once you have shown me, I want you to build it in that order on your rec and rec. So if you start with two, I want you to build two. And then if your next group was whatever, and I want you to tell me the quantity after you've clustered them and after you've shown me physically with the pen tool, how you have grouped them and counted them. And don't look at anyone else's, just off you go. So how many dots are there? How are you clustering? And then I'd like you to build it on the wreck and wreck. Priya, I like that you're putting the, the quantities beside it. That's actually quite helpful. Because I want to know in the order that you added them. So if you could add your addition sentence at the bottom. So Priya, you started with five and then four and then, so if you could put them in that order and I can see a tool is doing that as well. I can see a tool is actually encroaching on Paula's <laughs> Using the big highlighter <laughs> as instructed. As instructed, that's right, that's my fault. So um, now, once you've got that down, um, Atul is now building, hopefully, his six plus his six plus whatever the last quantity is. Priya, you're building five plus four plus four plus two plus two. It's interesting that we've seen it in different ways. And again, it's, it's almost reliant on personal strategies. And I think that's that is also a foundation of mental maths, but it's on subitizing. You know, how you see it isn't necessarily how I see it. And that's the beauty of these um, dot patterns that Steve Wyborny has put together. And it starts that mathematical talk. But it also, I want you to think about this. I talked in uh, the last slide about how it's the foundation of mental maths because it's about how, what order you add things in. Now, I look at Paula's off right off the bat. Oh, first, I should ask you, how many dots were there, everybody? 17. Yes. So you all got 17, but you added them a little bit differently. So when I look at Paula's, I think, would there be an easier way to add them than in that order? Seven plus five mm -hmm. plus five. Paula. Double five plus seven. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we can have children talk about what's the most efficient. You were accurate. Absolutely. But now taking a step back, you can say, but if I were doing this mental math, or if I have to do it by subitizing, now I think I would cluster them and go five and five is 10 and seven. Perfect. Got it. And that's what we want to encourage is that really um, flexible thinking, but also um, we, we need that accuracy, but we need to be able to see it in multiple ways. So, and I talk about this, the reason I got you to build it on the wreck and wreck is I want to ask, who was the most efficient and who would you say had the least efficient strategy of coming up to 17? And I wouldn't do this in class, but I'm, I'm just asking you as, as adults. Efficiency meaning the most quick, yeah? Mm. I think the double five and seven, because we are going pretty much straight to 10, feels yeah. the most efficient to me. Okay. Hmm. And may I add, on a wreck and wreck, how many pushes would that be? Um, two. Yeah, or if, uh, even if you did each each yeah. quantity, Paula, if you wanted to mentally go five and five is ten, and then that, you could literally yeah. do it in two. Whereas Priya, how many pushes would we have to do on a wreck and wreck for yours? That's quite a few of them. <laughs> yes, <laughs> isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so basically, every time with the five and four. Um, there's two pushes there, but with the next four, I'd have to do two pushes just for that one. Mm -hmm. Yes. So again, we would talk to the students and say, did we all get the right answer? You know, is it about who's the fastest? No. But is there a more efficient way? And should we all take a look at, you know, at a little bit differently and think about things? So it's about expanding our teaching into getting into the minds of children. And so that's what I love about these is it's, it can talk about that, that efficiency and that accuracy. And you know what, we're going to have children that look at that and can't subitize. And guess what they're going to do? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, mm, 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 all the way down to 17. Are they accurate? 100%. 
but it's about that efficiency and it's about that, you know, thinking a little bit differently. So I really like these tasks to coordinate with a rec and rec to show that we all got the right answer. We all got the same answer, but we came up with it in many, many different ways, the way we subitized those and clustered those quantities. Okay, I'm going to yeah. bring that back over. I love that idea, actually, Amy, you know, in class and when some children that are still emerging mathematicians and they think, because I didn't do it my friend's way, I must be wrong. Whereas this really helps them see that we can see a problem in many different ways, but we can all arrive at the same solution. And that develops a really healthy learning environment, I think. Confidence too. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like to call it talk for maths. That's what I use. Yeah, mm. absolutely. absolutely. Powerful, you. absolutely powerful. Mm. Yeah, and I think I think the concept is simple, and yet I'll bet you Atul could say, you know what, I could use this with my, you know, year whatever, just to have, as Priya said, that that mathematical talk, um, mm. but also to bring out that confidence in some of the children that are struggling with with things and seeing, gosh, just a simple task like this, and I'm starting to see things differently. So I'm going to keep going because I think we've already covered this, but it was so <laughs> wonderful to listen to Atul and Paula have this great conversation about doubles. And I thought, I'm not gonna say anything. Um, but what I truly believe I've mentioned, I think this, you know, I think subitizing is the, this first start of mental mass and we need to know our doubles and we need to be able to do them mentally. So Atul, I could just let you do this whole slide because you, you said it so beautifully. Um, but yeah, it's about building and seeing doubles differently. I think you even talked about six plus six. So I'm going to ask you all on your rec and rec to build nine on the top, nine on the bottom. And what do you see? How much? What is the point? <laughs> I see two less than 20. <laughs> if you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> especially after me not uh, especially after my um sizing of the four empty boxes F. yes <laughs> and double nine is so hard for the children to recall if it was just rote learning but here you can see relationships forming and oh, i love it yeah <laughs> yeah, but it was so lovely when 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 he, when Atul you brought it up about the six plus six and how you see things and you're partitioning things and and that's exactly it. And I think even on our last chat, um, Atul, we we talked a little bit more sporadically about things, but here we're focusing on subitizing. But I have had, and I've mentioned it before, is that I've had children close their eyes and I say, build seven on the top in your mind, seven on the bottom. What's the answer? Efficiency wise, it takes a little bit longer. Why? They're doing two calculations, five and five, and then either four and four or two and two or whatever the, the, the quantity was. So you kind of go, oh, is that okay? And then you think, yeah, it is because they're not guessing and they really do understand it. And they're not having to memorize. And as Paula said, something as difficult as this, I never used to teach nine plus nine as two less than 20. Why would I? It's just words. But until you see it, you go, whoa. Mm -hmm. And then it also is reiterating and reinforcing how big is nine? It's one less than 10. It's this close. So, so much is happening um, just by visualizing and seeing this particular concept. We've got, it's a very sophisticated thing. You've got the distributive property of multiplication over addition. So yes. five plus four, two uh, multiples of five plus four is two multiples of five plus two multiples of four. But you've got the distributive property uh, over subtract sub subtraction as well. So, um, which is what Priya is doing. So the two multiples uh, of twenty minus uh, yeah two multiples of ten minus one. So that's two multiples mm -hmm. of nine, which is um, about twenty minus two eighteen. Mm -hmm. um, and you could give this, you know, you could form expressions instead of using. You could use five r plus four. W, so two bracket 5R plus 4W. If you expand that out as brackets, what do you see? Uh, well, 10R plus uh, 8W and so on. So 
oh, I'm liking the R and W for the red and white. Inter a tool, we'll have to talk. <laughs> <laughs> it is beautiful. Okay, I'm going to just keep going very quickly on to the next couple of things. Um, but it's also sort of about, you know, mental math. Yes, we've talked about addition, but I wanted to show you one other thing by Steve Wyborny, who I know um, Vicki Pirtle is a huge fan and I as well. I'm a huge fan. And so I want you to go back to ready position on your rec and rex. First, you're going to subitize. How many dots do you see? And I'd like you to build that quantity on your rec and rec. So what Steve's done is he's done hundreds of these slides and they're called splat. So he shows you a quantity and he wants you to count or subitize mentally. And hopefully you all came up with six. And this is, I have not made this slide. I simply copied and pasted it. So six comes up in the top and then all of a sudden something happens, splat. And we say to children, uh-oh, how many are under the splat? Can you show me on a wreck and wreck? How would you figure that out in your you know, in your minds? How do you know? We can't see them anymore. And I'll bet you Priya has the answer because she likes the unseen quantities. Yes. Now, my question to you would be, would how would you show it on the wreck and wreck? Because for me, I have just moved three of them a little to the right. I, okay, haven't, so you, I haven't taken them all the way. Okay. Is what you see what you're thinking? Have I done? Uh, yes. You yes, pulled six 100%, more. Absolutely. And then you sort of said, you know what? I'm not going to take them back. I'm just going to pull them back a little bit. Yeah. Uh, once again, there are two rules to the wreck and wreck. Ready position, one finger, one push. Is that how I would do it? Not necessarily. But in this case, does this work? Does this demonstrate what your thinking is? Yes. They haven't really gone, but they've kind of gone. They're kind of hidden. They've kind of moved. But So yes, absolutely, Priya. I think if we stick to the two rules and allow children or teachers to uh, talk about um, and validate their thinking and say, well, this works for me because this is what I see, then absolutely. So what you're saying is you nudge three of them over a bit. So what are you saying is how many are under that splat then? Three. <laughs> so guess what, Priya? On these pre-made slides by Steve Wyborny, I click one more time and it grays out, but it actually shows you. And you are correct. There are three under there. So again, using these lovely tools for this visual, but then incorporating the wreck and wreck. Eventually, I'd love for children to be able to see the six, say it's six, Splat, how many are under? Three. So it, it becomes mental mass from that subitizing, but but it has to start somewhere. And I think this is this is my goal for this evening is that I think we can build subitizing and think about subitizing and um, use tools and then eventually those those facts and those those concepts and that um, you know addition, subtraction, doubles, all of those things will come to life. I also have designed these sort of number of the day things um, that work really nicely with the dot patterns. And strangely enough, this is actually the pattern that I think was used on the last um, on the last podcast with Vicky. So in here is a quantity. How much do we have? And Priya's giggling because she subitized it one way and a tool did it another way the other day. But all I've done is I'm just going to show you visually what I was thinking. So I saw four there and this is what I would get children to do. So they'd have their own sheet and they would circle and circle. And then I'd say, so what is the number of the day? And they would say it's seven. And then I'd ask them to partition it. So now they're putting that abstract piece into it, but yet they've seen it. They can then build it and it looks a lot like the wreck and wreck. They can even start to think about mental math strategies such as one less, one more, and they can even start to calculate or write out an equation. Seven is equal to four plus three, but it can start with subitizing and just expand into so many other areas. And when you can do pattern of the day or number of the day um, with the little ones um, all the time to kind of reinforce and get them really thinking. Um, yeah, and yet if they had done it in a different way, you may want to partition it um, with the part, part, whole, and it might be a part, 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 whole, because you may have done three loops or what have you, but just kind of wanted to 
pop that in there as a suggestion because Paula's going to buy paper plates and stickers and then she may <laughs> want me to uh, send these slides to her as well. Mm -hmm. All right, folks, I'd like you to build, last task, I'd like you to build a 100 bead wreck and wreck. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to hit the plus sign at the bottom of the app and you're going to click until it stops. When it stops, there are 10 rows. But I need it to look like B and not like what's on my screen. So I need to change the bead order at the 50 mark. Why? So that children can subitize all the way up to 50. And Paula mentioned it a little earlier. She said, gee, I can see now you can, you know, subitize larger than, you know, numbers up to six. So, whoops. My question is, how high can you go, Paula, Priya, Atul? Ready? I'm going to click on that same app, and it's going to really challenge you. But I'd also like you to think about this, this, um, this information at the bottom. And it says that back in 1949, subitizing uh, comes from Latin mean sudden. So we have to suddenly be able to come up with that amount. But it also talked about a subitizing range. Now I've read different ranges. I've read five is all we can subitize as adults and children. I've heard up to nine instantly, not even, you know, without that sort of conceptual, but just being able to sort of know it. Um, but here's a challenge at the end of the evening. How high can you go? So I'm going to click, <laughs> all scared. Okay, are you ready? Because it's gonna sh it's gonna show us a quantity, and I'd like you to build it for the first one, and then let me just ask you for the rest of them. So you're gonna build what you saw. Does anyone need me to show it again, or are you brave? I didn't see anything. Yeah. Didn't see it. I, it didn't Did come it up come in up? the frame. <laughs> yeah, just, just no. <laughs> Pardon? It's the, it's the glitch on Zoom. It just didn't come up. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to show it to you again then. Okay, I'm going to actually pick another one because I'll just click on this arrow. Okay, are you ready? Gone. Rather than building it for lack of time, how many did you see? 63. Paula says 63. Well, there's no way, Paula, you could have counted those in the time frame. So I'm going to show the card. And how did you know that was 63? Because of the 50. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that there was 50 and then I just looked at one, 10 and three. Okay. And just calculated from then on. Yeah. So here you are subitizing numbers up to 63, which is unheard of. Um, and yet is it unheard of? So let's just do a couple more. I'm gonna put, who would like to be my next Atul? I think you're next, yeah? All right, I'll do but it. But everybody's gonna do it. And they're gonna agree or disagree. Here it comes. Oh, that's easy. Oh. That's, that's just 50. That's easy. That's just 50. I might have to give you just one more. Um, that looked like 93 or 83. Okay, let's show it again. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Instantly you went, oh. Yeah, yeah. And it is very fast. But again, with this app, I can actually hold it as long as I want and hide but what i wanted to show you that within you know our one hour session one hour and a bit session you were able to use and and subitize that high um with maybe a tool like the rec and rec that you've used a bit but but maybe not so much and children absolutely love this priya are you ready would you like one go for it okay okay 85 85. Now we can type the answer in here, but I just, you know, just for lack of time. So we'll just show it again. How did you know that was 85? Guess what? <laughs> oh, she looked at the missing one. I just knew it. <laughs> oh, Priya, it's fantastic because I don't think that way, right? But we have lots of children that will think that way. We're not laughing at you. We are not. We are. We are saying this is is sort of thinking about things in a little bit different manner. Well done. So, what didn't you see, Priya? <laughs> the fifteen. <laughs> and then, what did you have to do? Because the answer isn't fifteen. No, of course not. I'd I'd have to calculate it. Yes. Yes.
Now, some students may find that much more difficult. 100 subtract 15 is 85. Most of them will go with what they see, but not all. Um, and, yeah, and they'll sort of sort of um, begin with the 50, then add the next chunk and the next chunk. But again, just wanted to leave you with feeling really good about yourselves because now you can subitize all the way up to 100. Um, and I'm really proud of you. And uh, And I think, yeah, I think that's, it for me for this evening and I hope I hope I brought a little bit of life to subitizing I hope I brought um, some ideas some suggestions and um, yeah I don't know if you have any comments but I'm going to stop sharing so that it's just back to us yeah absolutely loved it it's such such fun that's the thing it never stops giving the wreck and wreck and it just it ticks so many boxes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Yeah, it's great. Really, really good. Yeah, I'm just looking at any comments. Uh, uh, nothing at the moment. No, just uh, quite a few from Vicky that was coming in. So um, yeah, no, it's, it's really good. So fun. So like energetic and just moving things around. And, uh, doesn't doesn't even feel like doing any work. Really doing any math sex. Yeah. It got quite competitive at the end, though, I thought. <laughs> For me? No, I think we were quite competitive. Oh, yeah, you were. Yeah, you were. Yeah. No, you did. You, did. you all did so well. And uh, yeah, it's just a real pleasure to share my passion for this um, on a topic that that is uh, starting to get talked a lot about. Sympathizing is really becoming a thing. And, and I think our discussion tonight has proven that, yeah, we need to. We need to make it a priority. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, we can uh, start wrapping up there. Um, so thanks everyone so much for your time. I know that's the, one of the most precious things we can do is give our time and uh, for agreeing to be on this crazy idea of mine or just, just live stream it on Twitter and God knows all, all the other social media. And it, um, it can feel a bit nerve wracking at first, but I think it's, uh, it's a pretty relaxed experience and it's for the for the greater benefit and we'll have the recording there so you know while you're watching the, watching the recording looking at things do do the exercises i'll put the links up to the i put down a reply anyway to the virtual app i can put it the dragon box the steve white Borney stuff uh, and this, this will go so well along with amy's yes. subitizing it's just a different way of looking at it um and um yeah thanks for your time uh hope to uh Meet you all in person. I'm going to the Mats Conf in Gloucester. Uh, I know I'll probably meet some people there. Um, but um, yeah, thank you again for your time. Yeah, also. Right. Thank you. Thank you, thank you everyone. Thanks, Atul. Thanks, thank you. everyone. So I'll hit the stop streaming now and then we'll just be on Zoom.